Kinetic study of the reaction between bleach and food dyes. There are two components to this lab. The first part will be to determine the molar absorptivity of erythrocin B. The molar absorptivity tells us how much light erythrocin B absorbs per mole per path length. Be aware that the molar absorptivity can change depending on the wavelength of light you shine through it. The second part of the lab is to use the molar absorptivity of erythrocin B to determine the rate of reaction between erythrocin B and bleach. We will begin with part A. This is the apparatus you'll be using in this experiment. Each pair of students should have one rack of cuvettes. The pipettes and volumetric flasks should be found on the side bench. You will be mainly using erythrocin B and bleach in this experiment. Both these chemicals can be found in the TA fume hood. These will be the spectrometers that you'll be using in this lab. Turn on your spectrometer at the beginning of the lab to warm it up. Remember to remove your gloves when using the spectrometer. Make sure that the wavelength is set to 530 nanometers and make sure that the transmittance is set to zero. Obtain between 150 and 200 milliliters of the erythrocin B dye from the TA fume hood. For flask A, pipette 75 milliliters of the erythrocin B stock solution into a volumetric flask using a long stem funnel. Do this using the 25 milliliter pipetter to pipette the solution three times into the volumetric flask. Follow the link in the description below for a detailed explanation of pipetting. Once you transferred the erythrocin B into flask A, dilute the solution to the mark with distilled water. Make sure that once you are about to reach the mark that you start using a pasture pipette to ensure that you do not overflow your solution. If the solution goes above the mark, then you'll have to remake the solution again from scratch. Mix the solution by inverting the flask approximately 20 times. Make sure that you are careful and that you have a tight seal on the flask or else it will spill and you'll have to remake the solution again. Repeat this procedure for solutions B, C, and D. Now you have to prepare your blank. Fill a cuvette with distilled water and wipe it. Place the cuvette in the spectrometer and set the percent transmittance to 100%. Your blank consists of everything in your sample solution except the component that is absorbing light. In this case, erythrocin B absorbs light, so your blank is water. Next, we have to rinse the cuvette. Pour a small amount of the solution to be measured in a beaker. Rinse the cuvette three times with distilled water and three times with the solution you're about to measure. Then fill the cuvette three quarters full with the solution. Replace the blank with the cuvette filled with your solution. Record the percent transmittance. Once done, repeat the rinsing and measurement procedure for the next three solutions. Remember to place the cuvette in the same orientation as the first sample to prevent variation in the light path. Next, you should plot a graph of absorbance with respect to the concentration of dye to calculate the molar absorptivity of erythrocin B. The molar absorptivity will be the slope of the graph. We will now move to part B, where we will use the molar absorptivity of erythrocin B to determine the rate of reaction between erythrocin B and bleach. Obtain approximately 30 milliliters of bleach and 30 milliliters of stock from the TA fume hood. Make sure to record the concentration of bleach that you are using. Once again, prepare your blank, but this time fill your cuvette with half water and half bleach. Insert the cuvette into the spectrometer and set the percent transmittance to 100%. Obtain three more pipettes from your TA and label them as bleach, water, and dye. Now is time to prepare your reaction. For trial 1, add 2 ml of your dye solution and 3 ml of distilled water to a clean cuvette. When ready to commence your trial, add 1 ml of bleach to the cuvette. Your partner should start timing at this stage with their phone. Quickly and carefully place the cuvette in the spectrometer and record the transmittance. Then record the transmittance every 20 seconds until it reaches 90% transmittance. 
Repeat this procedure for all other trials by varying the volumes of bleach, water, and dye, and the interval at which you recorded the transmins according to the table in your lab manual. Once you recorded all your kinetic data, you will be ready to generate your graphs using Excel.